Alrighty, everybody, it is noon. It is time for our uh, daily live life coaching at noon. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. I know that these have been super helpful to people. People have been coming in and talking to me. Um, or, well, I say coming in and talking to me. I mean, coming into my message box and DMing me. <laughs> and if you have any, I just want to open it and let you know that if you have questions, just send us a DM. I like, I get them on Deerigo Food Safety. If you're like a friend on my Facebook page, you can uh, friend me on my page. And um, it is, and I love to hear from you. If you have topics or questions you want me to cover, I am absolutely happy to bring those to these lives. We're doing these lives for a long time. Um, and I have a ton of content. Like I probably have six months worth of content. I'm not doing six months worth of noontime lives though. Uh, and if you have, um, so if you have um, like questions or topics you'd like me to cover, uh, I am totally open and I'm totally happy to do that. So. Uh, okay, so what, um, so what we are covering today, so we've, we're going through like my basic life coaching curriculum this week, uh, and it has a lot to do with creating your results in your life. And the question that I'm constantly reiterating to you and constantly reiterating kind of out in the world is, how do you want to be right now and who do you want to be? Now, those are really big, gigantic questions, okay? And there are people who feel like they can't be anything or do anything out in the world right now because they're confined to quarters. You know, I heard about a family member who's confined to quarters, essentially, okay? Um, and I know about other friends and family members that are self-quarantining in their house, okay? So they have a designated bathroom, they have a designated room, everybody clears out the kitchen when they go make themselves food or they get food delivered. So even, like, I want to tell you, even when the four walls are around you and there's significantly limited space that you can go, you can still be happy. You can still feel good about things, okay? And you can make choices about who you want to be in the world. Alrighty, and so for my wonderful aunt who's watching from potentially confined quarters, right? You can choose how you want it, how you want to be, and I know you particularly know how to do this, but this is for everybody else who really, who really is like, but wait. You mean I can be happy and be confined, <laughs> be confined to quarters? <laughs> and the answer is yes. Okay. And so it just, and it comes from a couple of things that we've been talking about all over from the course of the week. And today's, uh, today's live stream is all about decisions. Okay. Everything every result that we create in our lives, whether it's the results we mean to create or the results we don't mean to create, are result are, are come from our decision-making process. Whether we are using our prefrontal cortex to make those decisions, or we are using our lower brain and lower brain capacity. All right, you are making the decision to breathe, I promise based on your lower brain capacity. You are making the decision to watch my live based on your prefrontal cortex capacity. Both are decisions, both from come from different areas of your brain. What I'm going over today is all about making decisions that create results in your life that you want from your prefrontal cortex. Because your hind brain is going to make decisions that keep you getting the results that you already have. So the first thing you got to decide is, is are you okay with the results that you already have? Right? And so the, the, you know, kind of really 
easiest way for me to talk about that is my weight results. Like, again, I've lost 85 pounds and kept it off. And I'm like, I'm, I'm past the point where I thought to, to where I thought I was going to lose. And then I lost more weight. And then I'm like, hmm, do I want to go for another 10 pounds and see what happens? Um, and I haven't made that, I haven't made that choice yet. And it's taking up brain space. I'm not going to lie. It's like taking up brain space. And I'm like right on the cusp of deciding that I'm not going to try and lose those next 10 pounds in the next 90 days. Because I'm just going to, I'm going to think about other things. And at the end of Q2, I'm going to worry about those next 10 pounds. They come off, they come off. I'm not going to change how I eat anymore. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do any of that. Okay. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to decide, right, around what it is that we are trying to create. Okay. And I've had conversations this week about time management and deciding on time and about weight because there are a lot of people who are at home and they're like ready to take a break from work and we trot over to the refrigerator and we just grab some food and there's like a lot of mindless eating going on one of the ways i lost the weight is no mindless eating right <laughs> so i'm going to cover decision making and how i go about figuring stuff out when it comes to time and it comes to weight because it's really concrete and it's things everybody can get um, okay so what does that look like i'm gonna do time first all right because there's less emotion maybe in in managing your time all right so the first thing that you're gonna do and there's this is a it's a four-step process that i teach all right you are going to make a decision all right so step one is make a decision. <laughs> now, when you make a decision, okay, I want you to go do one of those water protocols that you, um, that I taught you yesterday, okay? Let me move this sucker over here. All right, so you're gonna make a decision, all right? And I will tell you if the circumstance, like the neutral, the neutral thing is your calendar, because I promise you your calendar is neutral. All right. What do you want? Like, what do you, what do you want? You can also start with the R, all right, and think what results you are looking for. So let's actually sometimes it's easier to work this backwards. So if the result is... All right, we're going to go for something really, really specific because this is how I do it. And it's really um, important. This is something I learned from the army and doing ruck marches. All right. And the, if you look at the result is a 50 minute hour. All right. So, um, and we're just going to aim this. Um, we're going to aim this for... Um, People who are working at home are doing other things, like lots of other things at home right now, because I promise you, if you're cleaning your refrigerator, it's still work. All right. One of the results that I get in my business, okay, and in my life, this is like how I got my DVM. All right. I, I got my DVM in 20 minute segments that led to 50 minute hours. And I can, and I'll, and I'll talk about that. Okay. This is a really specific result, okay? What this is, a 50 minute hour is, is you have blocked time on your calendar, all right, in hour segments where you give 50 minutes of really focused time and 10 minutes to get a cup of coffee, go to the bathroom, give the kiddos a hug and a kiss, you know, um, go like when I make tea, I race myself in the kitchen where I put the water on for tea and I see how many dishes I can get in while the water is boiling. Okay. Gamify your life. It's way, way more fun. Okay. This 50 minute hour, you can get your entire life done in 50 minute segments, right? I'm a veterinarian. I got my entire veterinary degree, you know, index cards for memorization stacked up as tall as I am, as high as I am tall. 
doing this, okay? So, 50 minute hours for work at home. I want you to think about just doing one set of focus time of 50 minutes, all right? Most people who I talk to, the evidence that they build around this, okay, is I can do that, it'll be easy, <laughs> right? If you don't think, if this is bringing true for you, okay, when you turn and face the truth of your feelings, all right, that that feels really constricting and hard, um, do this for 30 minutes, do this for 10 minutes. Like when we do this with the kids, we like start them in 10 minute blocks. It's totally okay. Nothing is going wrong here if you need to train your brain to do this. This is a learned and learnable skill, right? So if you are, so get to some place where this feels okay. We are making an intentional model here, folks, okay? You may be someplace different and you just gotta do these water models until you get to something that feels easy, something that feels doable, okay? Because you are working to create results in your life, all right? So if you turn and face the truth of your feelings around um, doing a 50 minute hour at, and you think I can, you know, like I can do that, right? A lot of people feel competent. So now I will tell you when you're feeling competent, all right, you're gonna have actions around scheduling. And we're gonna talk very specifically about what that looks like so that you can be kind to yourself, right? And then the thought, if you look at all of this, is I want to schedule my time, right? You have to come from deciding what you want, okay? Because your brain, your, your, your hind brain wants things. This is all about coming to what you want from your prefrontal cortex, okay? So do as many of these as you need in order to figure out what thought you can believe to get the result that you want, okay? The thought you can believe to get res the result that you want. I have been, I'm not gonna lie, having an epic problem with my social media consumption. I was doing really good at the beginning of the week and then it's been trailing off. Okay, and so when I was doing my belief work, when I was doing these water models today, all right, I was like, I, I originally wrote down, I can, I want to, to, I want to have a social media protocol. And then I did the work and I'm like, oh my God, I don't believe I can have a social media protocol. So I kept backing off, okay, the bigness of the results to, what did I write down? I can develop the skills of a social media protocol. I can develop the skills of a social media protocol. And that's, we call that a bridge thought. And when I start thinking that, I'm like, oh yeah, I can develop, I believe that thought. Okay, so you gotta make a decision, decision from a thought you believe, okay? And the water protocol is gonna teach you, the water model is gonna teach you how to believe whatever it is that you need to believe, okay? So you're gonna make a decision. It's gonna come from choice, all right? It's gonna come from freedom. And it's not gonna come from should. This is not, this does not work if it comes from should, okay? Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to write it down. Right? You're going to write it down. Now, we're talking about time. I'm going to go through this with, um, with food in just a second, but you're going to write it down. All right? So what that means is, is I want you 24 hours in advance uh, 24 hours in advance to schedule at least one 50 minute focus time hour, hour for tomorrow, okay? You can try and do it for tonight, but most people's calendars are a little full, all right? 
24 hours in advance. I do this the night before. So I guess it's a little more, a little less than 24 hours in advance, but it's before I go to sleep. Okay, so I do this um, and I'm getting to do this towards the end of my day. All right, so beforehand, uh, preferably 24 hours in advance, but at least the day before. All right, I want you to decide what your schedule is going to be tomorrow. Okay, I can show you my schedule for today. Um, and I have every hour blocked out between now and 5.30 when I leave for my walk. Um, right? So you're going to write it down. This is imperative, is you write it down. All right, next imperative step is you show up and do the work no matter what. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is what teaches you to have your own back. You show up and do the work no matter what. I assure you, when I'm supposed to be writing a foreign supplier verification program for my clients, it's way more fun to read the New York Times, okay, because it gives my brain a bigger hit of dopamine, okay? It's more fun to snuggle the kids. It's more fun. It's like there's a a lot of things in the world that are more fun to do than foreign supplier verification. A lot of things in the world more fun to do than clean the bathroom, right? A lot of things more fun to do than whatever work that, um, um, whatever boring work that you have, okay? And so um, you're going to show up and do the work no matter what, all right? And what this means is you're going to tolerate and teach yourself to tolerate discomfort, all right? What is standing between you and the life you want is your tolerance of discomfort. I know that sounds really strange. What is standing between you and feeling better half the time is tolerating discomfort, okay? Then you are going to reflect on what happened, uh, all right? We call this the after action reports. You can take the girl out of the army, but you can't take the army out of the girl. All right, you're gonna ask what worked. You always ask that first, what didn't work? And what am I gonna do different? Okay. Or what am I going to change? That's how I run my whole life. Okay. When you do this, this is called creating a protocol. Protocols are decisions ahead of time. When you make your decisions ahead of time with your prefrontal cortex, your exhaustion level will dramatically drop, okay? Because what wears us out is decision-making all the time, okay? And so what this looks like with time is getting on your calendar and saying, you know, like, well, this is, my cal this is what my calendar looks like. I generally try and get up around 5.30. If I get up before then, it just gives me extra time to coach. Okay, and write in my journal and, and that sort of thing. So from six to seven in the morning, I do my self coaching. From seven to seven thirty, I read the New York Times, I check social media, I do all that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, and then I like give myself I let I allow myself to get like coffee and all of that sort of stuff, and I give myself sort of a break, and then my work day pretty much starts at eight. Okay. And I either have coaching clients at eight from eight to eight fifty, really. Um I have um I have to check emails and do to-dos. I take a half an hour for that. I um I have asks that I do on a daily basis. So, you know, like, hey, if you think this is helpful, share it with somebody. Yeah. Okay, so that they can also get the benefit of it. And so I just, you know, it's like all the things I do over the course of my business. I schedule lunch, I schedule these lifetime these 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 lives, I schedule everything and it's all written in my calendar every single day, the day beforehand. 
it's all decisions made ahead of time, okay? And then I constantly check my calendar to make sure that I am squared away, all right? So that's what it looks like. But uh, when you're doing that, there's one really big thing you have to do first, especially for everybody who's working at home now, okay, or has always been working at home and still has an epic ton of chores that they have to do and things that they have to do with the kids. You always schedule time for yourself first, okay? So my time for myself is my walk in the afternoon, my doing my self coaching because I get I like get on my bike and I write uh, okay I do like the question prompts that my coach gives me, um, and and I like my brain goes absolutely haywire if I don't do those things okay. You always schedule you time first. Lunch always gets scheduled. It's our biggest meal of the day okay, um, and I want to be able to sit down and have lunch. We've started Andrew and I have started having cappuccinos okay because i need i'm working like 10 hour days and that gets to be you know i'm constantly asking questions i'm constantly coaching and it's amazing and i love it but i need a break and i need to actually be able to talk to andrew because he runs so many parts of my business and so i've got to set up processes so that we have time to connect and we decided to do it over cappuccinos uh, at like 4 or 4.30 in the afternoon. So kind of depending on the day, all right? And so what that does is that brings me into um, doing a food protocol, okay? So our food protocol is the same thing. We're gonna make a decision, all right? And the decision is, all right, I'm going to live in the following protocol, all right? And this is how, friends, I've lost all the weight. What works for me might not work for you, all right? I eat two meals a day, all right? I, um, I, I essentially don't eat after two, all right? After two or before seven. We call this intermittent fasting, all right? It's very, very good for you and I can explain it, all right? I'm not gonna eat after two or before seven. I don't eat uh, no flour during the week. I don't worry about sugar all that much. I don't eat a whole lot of sugar. No alcohol, I don't drink anymore, right? That's part of my protocol, okay? I have a whole set of food restrictions around my like nightshade allergy. <laughs> so that's automatically my protocol, whether I was trying to lose weight or not. All right, um, and I am going to write out food 24 hours in advance. Um, I eat within 60 minutes. Okay, so if I start breakfast at seven, I'm not still eating breakfast at nine. My like breakfast is done, no? Okay, um, and that's also way better for your teeth because it allows you to like brush your teeth between meals. All right, that's essentially what my food protocol is. It's not super restrictive. Oh, and this is the other thing is that I plan exceptions. Some all right, I plan exception eats. Now, I'm home all the time, so exception eats are not terribly difficult for me, all right? Um, and, but if I was like, say I was gonna go meet somebody for coffee, okay, I might plan an exception if I know they have really good cinnamon rolls at the coffee spot, okay? And I'll say, I'll make an exception, it's fine. I just make that decision 24 hours ahead of time, okay? Then I write down what I'm gonna eat tomorrow, okay? We, we meal plan two weeks in advance, so I look at the meal plan, I write down what I'm gonna have, okay? Um, we have an egg dish that with vegetables, and then I'm gonna have mint tea and chocolate, because that's kind of what I eat in the afternoon, <laughs> okay? So I'm going to live in the following protocol. I'm gonna write everything out 
this is part of my protocol is write out um write everything out 24 hours in advance okay now yesterday here's what happens yesterday benjamin after we did our facebook live benjamin made chocolate chip cookies mm. okay he makes amazing chocolate chip cookies they have big chocolate chips in them they have little chocolate chips in them they have salty chocolate chunks in them they're amazing right and I said, hey, Ben, I'm not eating flour during the week. Um, and I'm not eating flour during the week. Can you save some dough and so I can cook myself and have fresh chocolate chip cookies as the chocolate cookies made on Wednesday on Saturday? Mm, okay, which means that I'm going to still follow my protocol and I'm going to deal with the urges, okay, when the house smells super good around chocolate chip cookies. Okay, it's the same way I'm gonna deal with the urge to go check my email, to go check social media, you know, get on Facebook or get on the Slack channel or whatever when I don't feel like doing my work. It's the same urges. And the best way to deal with the urges, okay, is to remember you're committing no matter what. All right, so you write down ahead of time and you remember you're committing to show up no matter what. All right, and then if something happens, if something happens, all right, you're just gonna reflect uh, and do your AAR and decide what you're gonna do differently. Not gonna lie, not eating flour during the week didn't work so well last week. So you know what I decided I was gonna do? I was gonna be super vulnerable with my kid, okay, who loves to make chocolate chip cookies and loves it when other people love his chocolate chip cookies and say, hey Ben, you know how we talk about our over desire for carbohydrates? I'm working on understanding my own over desire for carbohydrates and I've decided to eat only simple carbohydrates on the weekend, okay? And Ben totally understood. He's like, I totally get it, mom. I understand because we have lots of conversations about over desire for carbohydrates around here because we live in American society and we all have an over desire for carbohydrates, right? But when you allow yourself to be vulnerable to the urges that you are having, okay, it really opens up a whole lot of dialogue with yourself. And that's where the growth is, okay? You know, they talk about in meditation the, the new neurons that you create when you meditate, they aren't created when you're sitting there and you're like in your Vipassana or however you pronounce it and feeling your breath go in and out of your nostrils. The new neurons are actually created when your mind goes off to, you know, your kid walking up the stairs and what's he doing and what's for lunch and, and uh, you know, the Red Sox score if they were playing and, and what's going on at the live briefing. And, at the, and then you decide to bring yourself back in. An urge is the same way, uh, okay? The new neuron development, the new space in your prefrontal cortex is when you show up no matter what, mm, and you allow yourself to feel all of your feelings, which I guarantee you, if your kid makes chocolate chip cookies in the afternoon and you've decided not to eat them, feels like ass. Doesn't feel awesome to say no to chocolate chip cookies that are warm and inviting. And I just take a deep breath and I say, wow, this really feels terrible. Boy, do I really, really want that. Dude, I really want that. And I give myself permission to like feel this urge and not do anything about it because I've decided not to do anything about it. And that's how I get everything done. That is how you create a protocol. Protocols are just decisions ahead of time that we act on no matter what. And then we reflect and do our after action reports. What worked? What didn't work? What am I going to do differently? And don't worry about judging yourself. You're going to judge yourself. Okay. You're gonna judge yourself. You've been judging yourself for forever. It's not gonna stop now, but you don't have to give it the airspace that we normally give it, okay? If you eat off protocol or if you go off your time protocol, hey, wow, I totally noticed I went off my time protocol. I must be human. Because <laughs> I guarantee you, you're human. Uh, the cat did not come and do coaching today. Alrighty, so that's what we've got uh, uh, for coaching today. 
Everybody, you are completely amazing. We are totally getting through this together. I love you so much, and I'll see you here tomorrow. Bye, everybody.